Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from Uganda, the land where God resides. Because we are located across the equator and the land is very hot. And so God is a consuming fire. Uh, believe with me. And I just want to thank God for the friendship, the acceptance, uh, the reception I received ever since I met Pastor Tunde. We met here first time and then he came to Uganda. My father, Pastor Sam Mukabe, took him to the seat of Masaka. And I remember he told me, I always move with the shofar. He told me to blow the shofar seven times. And I have that recording up to today. Whenever I remember the sound of the shofar and the prophetic words he was speaking upon our land, we know our land was in a bad state and we needed a prophetic word for the land. When you come back, you will see a great change in Masaka district. I thank God for that. Amen. So my time is already out, so we need to go into the message today. I can't go into other businesses. Pastor told me, uh, of course, what he spoke to me is really, real, equipped for battle. And I know, you know that I will be speaking to us. We want to be equipped. I believe like a soldier, like a British soldier going to the battlefield, you know whatever it takes to take a soldier out. He has to have everything you can think about such that when he goes to the battleground, he's equipped, he's more than ready to combat every circumstance. I believe they even have the compass, they have everything, even the medication. They have everything they need. So they are ready. As you see him dressed up in his attire, and even the bag behind, every, he has everything. Even if he falls in the, into a jungle, he can keep going. Even some food is in the bag. Not your burgers. He has certain type of food that could keep him going for long. Are you with me? So I believe you know that I will be speaking today that you will be equipped. Because I strongly believe as Kingsborough family, you are already in a season of renewal. You are already in the season of rebirth. You are already in the season of redefining your purpose and your vision. And actually it's a season of refreshment. You have already started on a fresh journey. I just want you to believe that you are, you've already embarked on a fresh journey that we, you have never embarked on. Amen. Amen. And we've got to embrace the new seasons. We've got to embrace what God is doing over our time. And we need to understand that God works in seasons and times. Are you with me? He works in seasons and times. And it's upon us to embrace and also understand the kairos. Are you with me? Oh, as if I'm starting to preach. Amen. I believe God is doing a fresh work. When we read uh, uh, Acts 3 verse 19, what I like from there, the scripture said that repent so that times of refreshing may come. From the presence of the Lord. Now he says repent. Change your mind. Change your mind so that the seasons of refreshment may come. Each one of us need refreshment. When you work uh, uh, tirelessly during the day you work. When you sleep and you wake up in the morning you are so fresh. When we have the weekend. The reason we have a weekend so that we may be refreshed and begin again. Are you with me? Refreshment is very important if we are going to see changes happening in our lives. Are you with me? I was, I was in the train last time and I saw something written that starting again, starting over is a sign of strength. Huh? Starting over is a sign of strength. I believe Kingsborough, we are redefining our purpose. We are, we are on the rebirth. We are just redefining our vision. Everything is just blessing. Can you imagine? Like you look at your trees in winter time. Before winter, they lose their leaves and you think they are dormant. But within them, they are resetting themselves. And when the spring comes, they begin to bud. And then you see the freshness, the new leaves and the new flowers. And everything turns green fresh. 
I love this country because some, it goes green at certain season, a, re, a season of refreshment. We, we have to embrace such a time that we need them in our lives because sometimes on the journey we may get tired and we need to be renewed from within. Everybody say renewed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Scripture says in Psalms, uh, Isaiah 40, verse 31, that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh -huh. they, shall, they shall mount up like the eagle. They shall run and not get weary. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. What I like most is renew. Are you with me? They renew their strength. An ego is a, is a bird that can renew itself. Somebody told me that if it is renewing itself, if it is in that season of renewal, it would go on the higher rocks. It would hit, hit its beak upon the rock and the beak would break off. It would remove the feathers. It would look into the sun straight so that this eye may be spoiled so that a new may come. And after that season of refreshment and renewal, the ego will come back with, in its new strength. Hallelujah. With its vision, with clarity. Yes. That's why the Bible said that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There is a commission I've been commanded to come down and speak to you today. But before I speak this in my country recently, it was, was it last year, one of our mainstream pastors repeated his wedding. After 25 years, I don't know whether Pastor Tunda has ever done this or any one of us. Has any one of us ever done this? But it was so great that after 25 years of struggling and living together, they walk into the aisles of the church once again and they took vows afresh. To me, uh, others would say is wasting money but spiritually and even physically, we need to renew our covenant. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So he, they, he, he did the vows again. As if declaring that we are beginning a fresh journey. We are forgetting the past. Now we are embarking on a new journey. Are you with me? I pray that you understand me today. And it was so significant to me. And today, what is the Lord commanding me to do? I've been instructed because I knew that I would speak here and I was praying hard before God alone. What do you want me to take to the people at Kingsborough? And as a matter of fact, whatever I'm speaking is a confirmation of what is already happening. It's a confirmation of what is already taking place. There is nothing new that I'm bringing around. But this is what I had the Holy Spirit inspiring me to let you know. Now that you've been moving you were like the children of Israel. As they left Egypt with Moses, they had different areas of campings. They would camp at Rephidim. They would, camp and they would camp at different places. So you have been camping in the same way. And even where you are now, this is not your canon. You are yet to enter your own canon. You are a people that are on the Exodus. Everybody say Exodus. And you remember God is a covenant God. God is a covenant God. When he met Abraham, he made a covenant with him. Are you with me? And when he met Jacob, he also made a covenant with him. He made a covenant with Isaac. He made a covenant with Israel. The life of the Jews was a life full of covenant after covenant. But from time to time, Israel would renew her commitment. And this is what the Holy Spirit inspired me. To come down here and declare a renewal of the covenant. A renewal of your covenant. A covenant is like two parties, two or more parties bound together. Bound together. It's like a bonding. What am I saying? To covenant is to commit oneself. To vow, to pledge, to pay allegiance, to enter into agreement. Or to make a pact. Let me tell you folks, even our lives, our lives are strengthened by commitments. In our own families, I married Stella. I know I'm in covenant with that young lady. I remember two years ago, I mean, uh, before, now we are 10 years now, 
But I remember along our journey, things went bad. The first year of our marriage was a terrible year and the second one. At one time, we kept silent to each other for one week. No one was speaking to another. We would pass through the corridors of the house. No one is talking to another. And I, and I said, this is now beyond. By the sixth day, it was like a bomb bursting. And all of a sudden, I remember I targeted her after bathroom. She was in her room, and I sneaked into the room. She had not locked it. And I knelt it down. I said, let, let us begin again. Forgive me. Let us begin again. Ah, I tell you, we began our journey afresh. In, other, in that little conversation, we, renew, uh, we renewed our commitment. And we resolved the past. Now, 10 years, well, we, we are inseparable. Hallelujah. Praise God. You will agree with me that life is governed by some form of commitment. Some of you have phones, you, you sign this, the terms and conditions. You have to agree them. You buy a car, you sign something. Is that right? Everything, even if you're taking a mortgage, you have to sign something. It's like a commitment that I'm committing myself to fulfill my pledge. And if you don't do, there are some conditions. Are you with me? And scripture says in uh, Amos 3 verse 3, can two walk together unless they agree? I believe Kingsborough, you have embarked on a fresh journey. The journey needs agreement. The journey needs total commitment. And I've been sent to let you know Yes, I know you are committed, but there is a time of renewal today. We are renewing our covenant. We are renewing our commitment to God. Are you with me? Two cannot work together unless they agree. I was, as I said earlier, I was reading the life of the Jews, the children of Israel. It was a life full of commitment after commitment. When Moses went to the mountain to receive the ten, the ten Commandments, it was a fresh covenant. And at one time when the, they, they defied God's ways, God would send Moses again, go and renew. Are you with me? Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Some of us, still before I go deeper, we come from families. Are you aware that even in our families it's like a, a, com a commitment? Huh? You find some children from, uh, some guys from Nigeria when you, to, to, to get to know that you come from this tribe, some have these welcome marks. Huh? When you see them, you know it belongs to that family. It's a sign of belonging. God wants us to go into a deeper commitment. You remember last, was it in general when I spoke to you that where the Lord is heading uh, is, is, is taking us to as Kingsborough, the Lord is calling us to a greater commitment. Even as he spoke to, to, to Simon, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Why did he ask three times? He was calling Simon to come to a deeper level of commitment. How I pray that this comes out right. I was studying about Ruth, uh, Ruth and Naomi. This, uh, Ruth was a daughter-in-law. Is that right? And a time came this girl in chapter 1, verse 15. She spoke to Naomi that where you go, I will go. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. Where you are buried, I will be buried. That was a tough commitment. Huh? Life is governed by commitment. Hello? Life is governed by what? Even if spiritual life is to become meaningful, you have to come to a certain level of committing yourself. To grow up in the ministry, it was a seven-year commitment that didn't shave the beard until seven years were over. And people looked at me, hey, 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 what's happening, Samuel? Are you a Muslim? I'm not a Muslim. But inwardly, I knew what was going on in my life. It was a life of commitment. How I pray today that we come to a certain level of commitment. Amen. When we read Deuteronomy chapter 29, we will read partly of that in the next seven minutes. Deuteronomy 29, if we can have it on the screen, can we? I want you, when you go back home, make a research on the covenant. Okay? 
These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. Now, God commanded Moses to make a covenant with the children of Israel mm -hmm. in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. You will understand that way back at Mount Horeb, they entered into a covenant. Are you with me? But then, at another phase, to where they were about to go, to the land they were about to possess, now in the land of Moab, they are renewing their covenant. And when you read down, he reminds them his gracious works, how he did mighty works in their lives. And he was demanding them one thing. Would you recommit yourself to me? I know you've been with me. Would you recommit yourself? Can we rush to Exodus chapter 24, all of us? Exodus 24. And from verse 1. Are you with me there? Can we go together, Kingsborough, all of us? And he said unto Moses, Oh, no. Yes, that's right. Come on. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadabu, Abihu, and the servant of the elders of Israel, and worship ye a thou. Come on. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill and according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace of and, to, mm -hmm. and Moses took half of the blood. Read louder, please. And Moses, all of us, and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar, and he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people, and they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do, and be obedient. You can, you can stop that. That's enough. At one time when Moses spoke to the children of Israel, according to the command of the Lord, we see that he gets blood and he sprinkles over the altar and even he sprinkles the blood over the people to affirm a fresh covenant. Are you with me? And today is a wonderful service for each one of us because I feel so strong in my spirit that God is calling us to come in total agreement. To renew our journey that we will walk together. Amen. Amen. Much as they were, do, they were renewing their covenants at different places, I strongly believe at Hyatt, you have not yet entered into a fresh commitment to serve the Lord your God. In other words, when they, we renew, it, it appears we are restarting afresh. We are beginning again. Are you with me? Are you with me, friends? And from Legion House to Hyatt, God is instituting us, or is calling us to a new commitment. Amen. One, in your walk with God, choose to renew yourself. Jesus said they don't pour new wine in old wine skins. Neither do they put a new cloth on an old cloth. There has to be a choice to renew ourselves. In your commitment to the ministry, I was looking into all this. I looked at Pastor Tunde and Tain as God called Moses and Aaron to take the children of Israel. And one thing you've done, you've been so obedient. When we begin to make these exoduses and journeys, people would ask questions, where shall we end up to? But you've not asked such questions. In your heart, there's a commitment. That where you go, we will go. We will serve the God you serve. Whatever you tell us, we will do. And we've come here today to confirm this. This is what I felt in my heart, the Holy Spirit telling me, tell them to renew their commitment. Renew their faithfulness. 
I know you've been faithful to God, but now it's time to renew your faithfulness in your area of ministry, your commitment to what God has called you. Faithfulness, even in your finances. Possibly way back, you've been missing something. Your tithe has not been possibly coming the right time. But as we renew our commitment, I say, Lord, I'll be faithful in my, my finances as well. I'll be faithful in my support to what you've called us to do. Amen. In our own families, married people here, the Lord is calling to renew your commitment to your spouse. It's a time of renewal. Even in your two of you together, renew your commitment that honey, we will work together again. Amen. We forget the past. Now we want to embrace the new thing God is doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. As I conclude, Moses spoke the words of the covenant and he confirmed it with the blood. Today we are coming into a covenant. We are entering into a greater commitment to walk with the Lord our God, to serve our God in this house. Amen. Amen. And we will confirm this by breaking bread together. The bread and, and, uh, the, bread and the wine we're going to take is not the usual one. This is just a new commitment between us and our God. And I heard the Holy Spirit prompting me strongly that if any one of us is not willing to go with us in this new journey, don't take it. But if you are willing to walk with us, wherever the cloud goes, we will go. Wherever the pillar of fire goes, we will go. Whatever the Lord tells us, we will do. As we stand at the higher ground today, we are breaking bread today. And Jesus said that take this cup is my covenant. Amen. The bread and the wine we're going to take today is just a symbolic of the renewal one of our commitment between us and him. Number two, the renewal of our commitment to serve with him. Amen. That we will walk faith with, with all faithfulness to him and serve our God. And we will be committed to what he has called us. Amen. So, Kings, but look at me. If we're going to reach where we want to reach, we need to come into total agreement. Two cannot walk together unless they stand on your feet. As I read these verses, I want the pastors around to help me bring the, these elements. Matthew chapter 26 and also 1 Corinthians 11. I want you to come and stand in front here. Let me first read 1 Corinthians 11. First stand here. 1 Corinthians 11 says, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. There are many verses you already know. But what I feel is strongly in my heart, a question deeper, will you serve the Lord your God? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. I thank you for the wonderful time given me to speak to these great people. And Father, Holy Spirit, you can expound it deeper in each of their hearts that you are calling us to renew our covenant with you, God, and even to the ministry where you have called us to minister. And Father, we consecrate the bread and the wine 
as a symbolic of the confirmation of what you've called us to do in this house. And Father, we stand in agreement that we will walk together. We will serve you in this house. We will serve you with our children and even with our substance. We will be obedient to walk with you, O oh God. Father, I pray for renewal today in the name of Jesus. Let's give them out. Make sure you add us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And visit the church website.